Mel Kuyper put out his first mock draft and has the New Orleans Saints taking Brian Thomas, LSU wide receiver, 14th overall. We are here after further review. We are going to react to Mel Kuyper's mock draft version 1.0. Mel Kuyper's got his first mock draft. Pretty fired up about it. Uh, I don't know that Mel's mock drafts are any more accurate than anybody else's mock drafts. And they're certainly going to change, but Mel's the man. Yeah. He's, been, he's been the draft guy for four I would say he is less correct. Mel is a good example of what is going on with the industry where he is a face, he is a narrative, he is a character. But if you want legitimate draft analysis, true, like the hardest hitting draft analysis and mock drafts, you can't go other places to find it. 40 years. So uh, Mel puts out a mock draft. I want to talk about it. Curious what he does. Mel Kuyper has uh, Caleb Williams going number one to the Bears via the yeah. Panthers. Uh, that's obviously the Panthers pick that goes to the Bears via the trade last year. Uh, and he's got Caleb Williams going to the Bears. So for sure. I mean, you're going to hear a lot of Caleb Williams slander. You're going to hear a lot of, well, maybe Drake May. Well, maybe Jaden Daniels. You know, man, eh, maybe, maybe this person, maybe that person. It's going to be Caleb Williams, you know, for sure. So you can go ahead and write that down. I believe in the mock draft, he has Jaden Daniels going number two overall, which is interesting. Remember, guys, quarterbacks do have a premium on them. Teams that need quarterbacks will take them. The, the chance of Daniels sliding to 14, the chance of Drake May Caleb Williams, any of these players sliding to the point to where the Saints could even entertain it is not going to happen. So if you're thinking, well, maybe we should try and do what we can to get Jaden Daniels, I mean, you'd be better off drafting Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster. It's not going to happen. What does that mean for Justin Fields? You know, I'd, One of the most commonly uh, bandied about theories is Fields ends up with the Atlanta Falcons. Could Bill Belichick be coaching the Atlanta Falcons with Justin Fields as his starter? I assume, <laughs> I didn't check the date of this. Uh, I know Kuyper released his mock draft, I think yesterday, so or two days ago maybe. But this was definitely, obviously, before the Raheem Morris news came out. Raheem Morris, new head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. Starting quarterback, that'd be pretty fascinating. But not as fascinating to us anyway as who Mel Kuyper has going number two overall. Number two mm -hmm. overall. That is Jaden Daniels. Uh, Mel Kuyper has Jaden Daniels surpassing Drake May as the number two player in this draft going to the Washington Commanders. Now, quick note on drafts. When you're looking at mock drafts, I would look less at the player and more at the position. So if you want to look at like 10 mock drafts, if all 10 mock drafts have a whatever team taking a wide receiver, but they're all different wide receivers, it really doesn't matter who the name is. It's just the idea that that's what they want. That's what they're looking for. That's what they need, right? So... When you see like Washington, Jane Daniels, or somebody has Drake May, or somebody has, you know, whoever, the idea is that they're going to take a quarterback. They, they don't know the name just yet. So, I mean, for a long time now, we've seen May. And now we're seeing Daniels. Will it shift back to May? Will it, who knows? But, the, but you can go ahead and pencil in. They are taking a quarterback. Washington still has to hire a head coach. So, it, it'll be most interesting to see who that is. But Ben Johnson. Man, it is so hard to argue against Jaden as the second best quarterback in this draft, and I think you could make a case for him as the best quarterback in this year's draft class. And I yes, I admit I am impossibly biased. Williams is way better than Daniels. I mean, as a prospect, he just is. Caleb Williams is one of the one of the best prospects I've ever seen coming out of college. I mean, he reminds me so much of like when you saw Cam Newton. Or when you saw players like that and you said, this is just, you don't see this kind of a player, you don't see this kind of a prospect coming out of college. You know, and that's what I think Caleb Williams is. I, I would, if I was the Bears, I would go ahead and make the pick. And unless you're entertaining offers to trade it, unless you're entertaining offers, I would go ahead and say, you know what, I'm t I'm t we're taking them. I mean, I, we're, we're, it is what it is. Let's take them, get them in the building, get them a contract. Let's, let's, uh, let's make it happen, Captain. But I can also look at the seasons Jaden Daniels, Drake May, and Caleb Williams had this past year, and there is an undeniable truth that Jaden Daniels, athletically, is the most dynamic of the three. Mm. And the biggest elements for improvement in his game were the deep ball and his ability to read a defense, and both improved astronomically. I also think to a certain extent at this point of the draft prep, if you're a team, you have to kind of take away what they did like results-wise or stats or all that, you have to look at what they can do. Like you look, look at someone like Josh Allen. If you look at what he did at Wyoming, it's like, eh, this is kind of whatever. But then you got to factor in who's his coaches, what kind of training is he getting, 
uh, who are the players around him, you know, what are his receivers, what, what kind of defenses does he face, and all of that stuff. What's the weather? Whatever. You got to kind of take a, that away and instead just look at, all right, what are his tools? Who is he as a person? What can we develop? So I understand Jaden Daniels just won the Heisman. I understand he had a better season than Caleb Williams. But if you're just looking at them kind of parallel, I think Williams is the better prospect. Was he the better player last year? No, Daniels was, but it's separate things. Maybe it, it, it's not a it's not a what have they done kind of process. It's a what can we get them to do process when you're looking at when you're looking at these draft prospects where they've already done with their, they've already done what they did right. So like you're not getting that. You're not getting same with like Tim Tebow. You're not getting the Florida Tim Tebow. Totally different. It's like okay, what does Tebow have? What what does he have? tool wise mentally all that stuff that we can take harness develop and then what do we think we can get out of them if you think you can get more out of a you know backup quarterback from louisville or something who has great great tools and all that if you think you can get more out of that player than a drake may you know then you wait take that player so try and not worry that much about what has already happened Caleb Williams projects as a better draft prospect, maybe. But I Thank am you. totally I totally understand why. You would have Jaden Daniels going number two. I could see Jaden Daniels going number one. It seems like Caleb Williams has been locked into that top spot for a long time and is going yes. to go there. But he, he could at least make it interesting. Uh Kuiper's got Drake May going three to the New England Patriots. Patriots same thing. We've seen May, we've seen Daniels, whatever. New England, we assume, is going to take going to be taking a quarterback. Just need a quarterback, they'll likely go there. Um, Marvin Harrison, four to the Cardinals, Brock Bowers, five to the Chargers. And so that one's interesting because we talked about Brock Bowers potentially being uh, someone there for the Saints at 14. If Kuiper has Bowers that high, it's hard to imagine he slips from, even if he doesn't go five, but if he's in that range, that's a huge fall. For him to go 14. So that's one of the first things I thought when I saw this was, damn, maybe Brock Bowers isn't going to be available for the Saints. If he's talking about going five, will he actually go five? I don't know. But if, if Kuiper has him in that kind of range, you know, that's that's a whole lot of teams passing on him for, for, them, for him to get to the Saints. And then the second receiver off the board, Malik Neighbors, number six to the New York Giants. You are seeing this mocked more and more in, in drafts is Malik Neighbors number six to the New York Giants. It One thing is pretty clear when you look at every mock draft, Malik Neighbors is being mocked by everybody as a top 10 pick. And yeah, so that's a good example, right? Like, depending on where he's going, is he going to go to the Giants exactly? Maybe not. But if everyone has him in that top 10 area, more than likely he's going to find, a, find somewhere in the top 10. So Malik Neighbors is somebody else who we can kind of scratch off the board. We're scratching off Neighbors, we're scratching off uh, Bowers, Daniel, some of the quarterbacks. And what an amazing season for Malik. And you just feel so good for that guy. A guy from Louisiana who it meant the world to him to put on for LSU and for the state of Louisiana. Leaves LSU as the all-time leader in receptions and receiving yards and is going to be a top 10 pick. So congrats to Malik Neighbors. But the one that's the most interesting, and I always scroll to see, okay, well, who does he have the Saints taking? And there is a black and gold, purple and gold synergy here because Mel Kuyper has the New Orleans Saints taking Brian Thomas Jr. at number 14. Yeah, so we we have been saying that Keon Coleman would be a good pick here, right? And we're in the, the right, right church, wrong pew, as they say. So this, he has Brian Thomas. Now let's go ahead and read what Kuyper's got going on. Carr had an up-down season. His sizable contract means he'll be back as a starter. True. Uh, Chris Lave is a star. Michael Thomas likely will be leaving. Yes, uh, Kamara, Rashid. Thomas, the third of the LSU offensive players on the board in this projection, led the FBS with 17 touchdowns last year, averaging 17.3 yards per reception. He had just three drops on 93 targets. Strong. He can take the top off defenses and be a stellar number two option as a rookie. Plus, the born and raised Louisiana kid wouldn't have to leave the state. I don't factor that in very much. I know a lot of draft people do whenever they see, oh, this player played college in the state, he's an obvious fit. I put virtually zero, zero stock into that. You know, if a team thinks a player is better, they'll draft him from Mars uh, versus LSU. You know, if the Saints think some prospect in in uh, you know, Venus or whatever <clears throat> is, is a better prospect, so 
whether it's Thomas or Coleman, I do like the idea of a wide receiver. I do like the idea of adding playmakers. We want Derek Carr to be good. We're going to have a new offensive coordinator. We want the offense to be stellar, right? We do need things everywhere. We need defensive ends. We need uh, offensive line. We need, we can virtually take any position, an impact player at any position besides quarterback, and they're more than likely going to be starting and going to be making an impact this season. The Saints are shallow at spots. They're shallow uh, even at, at places we're good, like wide receiver, right? Chris Olave is really good. Rashid Shahid has proven he can be good. But having a second receiver that someone like Chris Olave, who can be dynamic, who can be impactful as a rookie, that's going to help Carr. Same with like Brock Bowers. You know, we have a ton of tight ends but we don't have a truly elite guy for Derek Carr. So I, I like the idea of a wide receiver. I like the idea of whoever it is, just getting someone in there to, to kind of give us some depth on the offense. And a lot of people too, people will say, oh, well, A.T. Perry is the man. You know, I really like A.T. Perry. Okay, fine, whatever. Get more depth to that room. No issue with if we have Alave, let's say A.T. Perry explodes and he's a true number two, if we're going Alave, Perry, and Brian Thomas or Keon Coleman, then we have Rashid too. That's a ton of weapons. You're rotating people in and out on personnel uh, changes and, and, and down in distance, and you're getting everyone involved, and you're not asking people to do things they don't want to do or they can't do. So just because you may like A.T. Perry is, no, is not a reason to not take a impactful wide receiver. And there's two components to this. One is what a meteoric rise for Brian Thomas, who was on nobody's first-round mock draft at the start of the season, started to creep into some mock drafts as the season went along, maybe late in round one. And now you have him as high as 14 to the New Orleans Saints. So, What I would say about Thomas, what I would focus on if I was in the front office of the Saints, is how he works out. Because he had the Heisman winning quarterback. Obviously, he's going to have good numbers, Right. Were his numbers a product of the quarterback and a product of the situation, or were the numbers a product of him? And you're only going to, going to be able to tell that because of the or with the workout. That's it. If you're working him out and you're not blown away by his, his physical abilities, if you're not blown away by by his speed or his cuts or his routes or his hands or any of that, eh, maybe you do drop him. You know, because like I said, 17 touchdowns, 17.5 yards of catch, all that stuff is cool, but that already happened. You know, are you going to, are you drafting him and expecting him to have 17 touchdowns or 15 touchdowns? W were the touchdowns because of Daniels, because of the offense? Where did the touchdowns come in? You know, were the touchdowns just bombs against bad teams or were they contested catches? It's all different. If you are a front office person, if you're a draft evaluator, if I was going to draft Brian Thomas, I'll tell you this right now. I would watch every single one of his catches, every single one of his targets. This, everyone, no problem. I would not just look at 17 touchdowns. I, I want to see every touchdown. I want to see the situation. I want to see the game script. I want to see the defender. I want to grade the defensive back. How many times is he on the second best defensive back? How, you know, is the, is the number one on Malik Neighbors? Okay, how does that translate to the NFL? If he's on the second, third DB on whatever team, what about now when he's facing up against a number two cornerback in the NFL? Can he create separation? Can he catch the ball, uh, yeah, contested catches? Those are the kind of things you have to be asking yourself. It can't be as simple as, oh, wow, pretty good stats, and oh, cool, he's from LSU. It's not, it's not enough. Okay, it's not enough. Conversely, a guy like Keon Coleman, who I've been talking about, I think will work out well. Physically, he seems to be a physically dominant receiver. He, he gets by on his physical skills. Now, it's a lot of the same. Depends on how they work out. Depends on how they look. You know, we, you, give, you give both players a chance, obviously. But I think a lot of this pick comes down to uh, the workouts. And I also am very cautious when it comes to these, like, meteoric rise players. Where last year, they're not on anyone's draft board. Now, because of a stellar season from the entire offense, you're moving them up not only to the first round, but to a top 15 pick. You know, are you... Are you overbuying? Are you buying into the hype? Or is there something there? So, Brian Thomas as a top half of round one guy makes complete sense. 
He's a freak show. He's 6'2", over 200 pounds, Very runs nice. like a deer, has strong hands, can blow the top off of defense, can make tough catches over the middle. He's physical. He's awesome. I mean, Brian Thomas is a top half of round one guy. Of course that makes sense. If that's all the case, you know, if, if, if that is all quantified and confirmed via the combine, via workouts, via all that, all for it. All for it. Right? And that's what I'm saying. You have to take what he, what he just said right there. Take his actual skills. Take his actual what he can do. See it. Confirm it. Validate it. Grade him. And then possibly he is your pick. Brian Thomas to the Saints. I love that as well. This is not, I think, going to be popular for a lot of Saints fans who I think we all intuitively say, ah, go get defense. But I don't think the Saints are picking a quarterback. While I would love to see it, I they're don't not. think the Saints yeah, are taking not. a quarterback. They they're have not. too much money invested in Derek Carr next year, and they're yeah. going to try to maximize their return on that investment. So if you're going to maximize your return on Derek Carr, get him an OC and get him help. Yes, we love Chris Olave. Rashid Shaheed had an awesome year this year. Well, you're also helping yourself in the future, too. If you get, let's say you get Brian Thomas. Let's say he's really good. Let's say he's equal to Chris Olave. All right, we're not going to say he's going to be the next Randy Moss or anything. But let's say he's equal to Olave. And let's say Carr doesn't work out past this next year. And you're, you're moving away from Carr and you're bringing in a new quarterback or whatever. What a great situation to bring a young quarterback in when all of a sudden you've got playmakers like Brian Thomas and Chris Olave and Rashid Shaheed and Alvin Kamara or Kendra Miller or whoever ends up being there. That's a great spot. So you're kind of also doing this for your future quarterback or your future offense. You know, it's not it's not just get car help now. Fleshing out this room, that's why I'm always saying take best available. Because if you take best available, you're kind of paying the dividends for, for the next couple of years or for the next quarterback or the next coach or the next version of the offense or, the, or whatever whatever happens. You know, Defensively, he said intuitively we think defense. I don't intuitively think defense. I think intuitively pass rush because we are horrific at getting to the quarterback, sacking the quarterback, and any kind of pass rush. So if a impactful end is there like a jared verse dallas turner if i hope that's right because i always i'm always thinking dallas turner the guy from alabama i'm always thinking him but for some reason i get him and Derek barnett which is who's an nfl player i get them mixed up so i'm constantly wanting to mix up the name so i hope it's dallas turner i'm going with it it is what it is if you have someone like that and you're thinking okay we can get the same amount of impact do we want it from a second, third wide receiver, or do we want it from a pass rusher? That's an argument to be made because we are real bad, real bad at rushing the passer. So just right now, let's pretend Bowers doesn't slide. Right now, I would say the two positions you got to be looking at is wide receiver because it seems like you're going to have a choice of a Keon Coleman or a Brian Thomas. I would say wide receiver or I would say pass rusher because it looks like you may have a choice of Dallas Turner or uh, Jared Verse. And you need both positions probably equally. They'll be just as impactful. All are kind of graded around the same area in all the mock drafts that I've seen. So I would focus on those two positions right there. Throwing offensive line out. We can we can address offensive line in free agency. We not 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 what we need right now. So that's what I would look at barring some kind of a slide, like a slide from a Brock, a Brock Bowers or, or or another player. What is Michael Thomas? I don't know. He's gone. He is an injury-prone receiver who has not been good in five years. He's gone. He's gone. Can you get Derek Carr another weapon on the outside? You've got Alvin Kamara back. You drafted Kendra Miller. You got running backs. You could certainly use a tight end, but Brock Bowers is going to be off the board. Yes, you need help on the offensive line. Mickey Loomis told us that it looks like Ryan Ramchick is going to get good news and be back, but you still need help on the left side of your line. So if the New Orleans Saints go with an offensive lineman or a wide receiver at 14, I would be perfectly fine with that. I think the Saints defense will be plenty good enough. And look, you have tons of holes on this team. Could you use another interior defensive lineman? Yes. You could always use an edge rusher. Am I concerned about Demario Davis nearing the end of his career? Absolutely, no. I am. Same thing with Tom. I am not because he was at such a high level. I'm not worried about replacing him. I'm worried... 
I'm not worried about replacing players. That's another, that's another part of it too, where a lot of the times you can get mixed up in the draft and you can think, okay, the draft is for replacing players. The draft is for the future. The draft is for developing players and all that. I look at the draft as what pick is going to make the most immediate impact. Because more than likely, if they make an immediate impact, you're going to be able to develop them into an even better player, right? So you don't have to think super long-term. And I think that's where the Saints get mixed up sometimes. They take a true development raw player who they're thinking, we'll take him now, and then in two years, three years, maybe we can develop them into an all-pro, a la Trevor Penning. I'm much more on the side of get me a guy who can come in on day one and be an impact to this team. Because if he can do that, and we sprinkle some development on top, that's how you can have an all-pro in their, in their second, third year. Tyron Matthew at safety. Are the Saints potentially, potentially going to trade Marshawn Lattimore? Could you end up needing a corner? Okay. I just mentioned tight end, offensive line. There's a lot of places you need help. But if the fulcrum, if the if, if the balancing act here is how do we get this seesaw to go positive for Derek Carr, then you've got to give Derek Carr assets to help him succeed. It's also the the where you get the impact. So if you think we can't get a Brian Thomas in free agency, but we can get a Jared Verse in free agency, or vice versa, whatever you think you can't get somewhere else, you should probably take it now. Like he said, defensive back. Let's say Marshall Lattimore's gone. And you have Paulson Adebo, Alante Taylor. Am I? Can you get a third defensive back from free agency? Or even a second defensive back from free agency? Probably. So I would shelve that. I wouldn't look at that in the draft. I'd look at that in free agency. You know? Like, can you get a Brock Bowers from free agency? Probably not. So if you can get Brock Bowers in the draft, take him there. Offensive line. Can I get the same production for whoever I'm taking 14th overall? Offensive line-wise? Yeah, I can get that same production from free agency. Okay, then let's move away from offensive line. You know, you can't get a Brian Thomas. You can't get a Keon Coleman. You can't get a Jared Verse. All right, let's focus on them. And I'm telling you honestly, I don't think Derek Carr is going to succeed. I do not think Derek... We have seen Derek Carr. We have seen his ceiling. He is not going to be a guy that wins a playoff game in New Orleans. Could you win a bad division? Sure. I thought they would this year. I thought they'd go 10-7, and seven, lose in the wild card round. You know, crazy that I'm the one saying this, but I actually think he can succeed. I think with the right coordinator, with the right offense, with the right scheme, you want to know why I think that? It's because he was succeeding towards the back half of last year. And if you do assume that he was hurt, you know, he was banged up in the middle of it, and he was getting used to players and coordinators, and we had Pete Carmichael and whatever, if Derek, if we get the... If we get the Derek Carr that we saw for the last five games, he can succeed in New Orleans. So I, I think the ceiling for Carr is a little higher than this. I mean, and maybe I'm maybe I'm, I'm you know have a lot of copium here. Maybe I have a lot of hopium, but I, I still the book is not shut on Carr. I think Carr can succeed, and we don't need Carr to be Patrick Mahomes. We need him to be Kirk Cousins. You know, can he be that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Sure. Like when Eli Manning was with the Giants, Eli Manning wasn't Patrick Mahomes, right? He wasn't Aaron Rodgers. He wasn't Tom Brady. He just had to do a certain thing for the team to succeed. That's what we need Carr to do. We don't need him to elevate his game to to be the best quarterback in the NFL. We need him to be a top 10, top 12 quarterback. Can he do that? Yeah, I think so. Sure. I, I think so. I think he can be right there. You know, can he be Jared Goff? Can he be players like that? Sure. And maybe even if not, maybe if he can't get to car or uh, Goff's level, maybe he can be a little bit less. Like I said, Kirk Cousins. Sure, works for me. Can he be what Joe Flacco was for for Cleveland? Sure. Joe Flacco wasn't peak Aaron Rodgers. He was good enough, did his job, had success. Wow. They went nine and eight, missed the playoffs. <clears throat> but if organizationally you are committing to Derek Carr, you're committing to Dennis Allen, you're getting a new offensive coordinator, then you got to get him help. And if Brian Thomas is sitting there at 14 and they say, we're going to get that dude, I'm perfectly fine with it.
Because yeah. even if it goes sideways for Carr and whoever the new OC is and Dennis Allen after this season, whoever the next guy is, is going to have a lot of toys in the toy chest to make that thing go. Exactly and make you a more said. desirable spot because of the talent you'd have offensively, at least the skill talent. So, Mel Kuyper has the Saints going. Brian Thomas at 14. Yeah, exactly. Exactly what I'm saying. Like, even if it's not for Carr, even if it's not for whoever, you're just making the roster better. And you're making the roster better, and making the roster better is never a bad idea. We're going to be covering the mock drafts. There's going to be 20 different versions. We'll be doing all of that leading up to the draft. May even do a fun little live stream on draft night. Who knows? But if you want the realest coverage, I mean, come on, guys, right here. Make sure you're tuning in each and every day. Thank you for watching. I appreciate that. I will see you in the next video.